And so where we left off last week is where we will pick up this week. And the question now becomes, how are we, the believing community, we, the Christian believers, we, the true church of Christ, how are we to understand the context and the culture of life in God's presence? Well, first, we must acknowledge, you and me, true biblical believers, we must acknowledge that Jesus Christ is our creator king and that all of creation is his kingdom. Now, in this sense, I want to take you to Romans 3, where we see Jesus described as both the just and the justifier. I would say to you here this morning that we're going to look at that in a similar principle, and I ask you to begin now to see Christ as both king and the essence of the kingdom. Where he is, the kingdom will come. We're going to look today at the kingdom of God. And I pray that you'll see as we start in the Old Testament that the picture and the portrait carries all the way through the New Testament to right here, right now, in yours and my life. And it doesn't end here, by the way. You'll see before we're done, it carries all the way into the depths of eternity. He feeds them with manna from heaven and they grumble about the menu. See this pattern that where there is a pseudo-coup, compliance equals a co-conspiracy. You might say, well, I didn't help the coup. I'm just living in its midst, and I'm not doing anything about it. To the church, God would have you and I understand that to live in complacency under a spiritual coup is akin to being a co-conspirator. And I call you, professing Christian, to stand to put on the full armor of God and to resist the coup of the enemy and to stand firm for your Christ and your King. We live in a war, a kingdom that is in conflict, and the children of God have been called to carry the banner, the love, and the light into the darkness, to fight from our knees with the weapons of truth and love, and if so needed, as a witness perhaps even to the point of martyrdom. I ask you here this morning, brothers and sisters, how attracted are you to the ways of the world? How many times are you saying, and in what areas of your life are you saying overtly or subvertly, I don't want God's ways, I want to do it the way the world does? And before you jump up and give me a knee-jerk response, I ask you to check your heart, because I promise you that's a sin that we all struggle with in various degrees and in various aspects of our lives. And we live in this verse right here. For they have not denied you, truth teller, but they have denied me as their king, says the Lord. According to all the deeds that they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, they've been forsaking me and serving other gods. With all I've done, they're still forsaking me and they're serving other gods. And again, I challenge you, and I love you enough to say before you say, well, I would never bow down to an idol, and I wouldn't sacrifice my children to Baal, and I've never loved a totem pole. I ask you to look at your bank account. I ask you to look at your wardrobe. I ask you to look at your Facebook account and the time online. I ask you to look at your time, your talent, and your treasures. And I ask you, does Jesus jump out of your evaluation of your time? your talent, your treasure, your closet, your wardrobe, your social calendar, your serving heart. You see, we find ourselves here more than we would like to admit. For they are forsaking me and serving other gods. So they are also doing this to you. Now then, says God, obey their voice. Only you shall solemnly warn them solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. He says, tell them what it's going to be like. Tell them the truth. Contextualize to you and me, friends, whatever you serve is your king. You serve your wallet, your savings account, your security, your children, your status, your social spot, your house. What you serve is your king. And he says here, you will be his or its slave. I have lived in a place where I know that I have been in bondage and enslaved to my materialism. 
I pray to God if you're here today and you know that you're a slave to something else, whether you claim Christ or not, I pray that you will see here that the kingdom is in conflict and that you must, you must come and repent and seek the grace of our king here in his kingdom. He said, and in that day you will cry out, people. You will be his slave and you will cry out because of your new king whom you have chosen for yourselves. But the Lord will not answer you in that day. Choose the false king and you will have him. Walk away from me and you will walk away from me. And I may choose not to answer you, says God. Verse 19, but the people refused to obey, even after Samuel came and said, this is what God said. This is what the God who carried us out of Egypt. This is the God who proved himself with the 10 plagues. This is the God who brought the Passover lamb as proof. This is the God that opened up the Red Sea. This is the God who rained manna from heaven and gave you water from a rock. This God says, if you do this, you are doomed. But the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said to him, No, but there shall be a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations. No, God, we want to fit in with the world. I ask you, friends, what man-made God are you trusting? And again, before you tell me none, look at your time your talent, and your treasure. Look at your ministry schedule. Look at where and how you are pouring out your life or not. I leave this section with you, not only pointing to the conflict within the kingdom, but I just say to you, learn from this. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. I pray that you will wish for a walk that is worshiping our King. I pray that you will wish for and pray for and commit to a walk that is worshiping our king. Not because I'm looking to build a crowd, but because I love you and I know that anything and everything else will ultimately lead to your doom and destruction. 